The cubs have learned from mum and are starting to search for their own food. In the shadows of the rocks where they're foraging hides a deadly surprise. Scorpions. Equipped with vice-like pincers, venomous stings and lightning-fast, aggressive reflexes. More than a hundred different species are found in India, including some of the most venomous in the world. Many of them thrive in this arid environment. This one is looking for a dark corner to hide in until nightfall, when it will emerge to hunt its prey of grasshoppers and cockroaches. Although its venom isn't likely to kill an adult bear, it could deliver a painful sting to a young cub. Bibi knows to steer clear of scorpions, but her cubs haven't yet learned which creatures to avoid. Their soft snouts probe the nooks and crannies. Thankfully, this scorpion isn't deadly, but a painful pinch has just delivered an important lesson. Frightened, they run straight for their mother and both climb on board. Sloth bears are the only bears that routinely carry their offspring on their backs. It's a behavior developed to help the cubs save precious energy and allows Bibi to protect them from predators, big and small. Out of harm's way, the family retreats to their cave on the edge of the clearing. Since she gave birth here eight months ago, this cave has been the family home. It still provides safety and relief from the heat while they wait for the rains. By the end of June, the rains still haven't arrived. Drought is setting in. It's a real threat to the peacocks, but they have more than just their own survival to think about. They must pass on their genes while there's still time. Peacocks have a limited window for mating. If they don't breed in the next few weeks, they won't breed at all, and will have to wait until next year, if they survive that long. This male is in his prime. He has successfully fought off the competition and preened himself to perfection. But does he understand the basic principles of courtship? First, pick your target. Preferably one that's not a rock. Choosing an animal is better, but maybe not a mongoose or a monkey. At last, he's on the right track. But turning his back on her might be sending the wrong signal. Looks like Romeo has blown his chance. He's got to get this right, and soon. Most peacocks lose their tail feathers by the end of August. So time is running out. With the relief of the monsoon still nowhere to be seen, trees and plants are starting to wilt. And with them, the last of the macaque's food supplies. 
These mothers need to be well fed to produce milk for their infants. The youngest babies were born back in March, when their mothers had plenty of food to produce rich, nutritious milk. But like all mammals, without enough to eat themselves, their supply will dry up. And in the 90 degree heat, without its mother's milk, a nursing infant will almost certainly die. In times of drought, eight in 10 of these babies will starve. Unaware of the looming danger, the babies are getting more adventurous, starting to explore the area to look for food and playmates. But like all toddlers, squabbles break out easily. Although young females inherit their mother's position in the troop's hierarchy, all the infants scuffle to assert their dominance. Even at this young age, social rank is all important. When food is scarce, animals higher up the ladder have better access to the finite resources. Being at the top of the hierarchy still doesn't necessarily mean you have the pick of the food. Bibi and her cubs are here too, scouring the ground for insects. Bears, macaques and peacocks alike search for what's still on offer. On the far side of the clearing, despite the wait for rain, another species has a schedule to keep to. This is a colony of Bayer weaver birds. And these peculiar looking structures are the early stages of their intricate nests. These birds were stimulated to start building when the summer days reached a certain length and construction is now well underway. The males alone do the weaving. They tear long, thin strands from leaves and grasses, then carefully thread and knot them together into the foundations of their complex nests anchored in the branches. They will make more than 500 separate trips backwards and forwards to create their tubular masterpieces. Each male has his own technique. There's the analytical architect, the one who will make a strong, sturdy nest, but likes to take his time. Then there's the cowboy builder. He's certainly quick, but he's a little slapdash. All this activity is for one simple reason, to impress a watching female. She has the perfect vantage point from which to choose a partner. Flapping their wings, each male vies for her attention. She carefully inspects both building sites. She needs to choose the structure, most likely to provide a secure home for her precious clutch of up to four eggs. It needs to be high enough off the ground and on the thinnest possible branch to be safely out of reach of predators. Yet the nest and branch must also be strong enough to withstand the monsoon storms if they arrive. She chooses the perfectly executed structure built by the architect. His attention to detail has won him the girl. Now he's got a mate, he needs to hurry up and finish the construction. Rain or no rain, this female will lay her eggs within the next few weeks. Hey Love Nature fans, be sure to like and subscribe to catch all our wild animal stories. Get closer to nature right here on YouTube.